Hi, I'm Antonio Sala, and in this video we are going to finish the case study of an observer, an estimator of an unknown force acting on a mechanical system, let's say, designed with mu synthesis. In this video, we will compare the results in time domain with respect to H2 and H infinity observers over the nominal plant. We had this nominal plant, but our damping, the thing that multiplies S, was an interval, and the process noise F we wish to estimate was a band limited signal, so our physical model was encoded in this block diagram, which is a known linear time invariant subsystem in LFT with a unit norm, real uncertainty. And then we did set a generalized plant with constant input weights in all three cases, and some frequency dependent weights on the H infinity and musin options. So we obtain some worst case gain figures for the H infinity, higher than one meant that robust performance was not achieved, but a worst case gain of 0.99, which meant that robust performance was achieved with mu synthesis. We did an order reduction to order 6, and we still kept our robust performance worst case gain below 1. We were very lucky. And finally, we compared in frequency domain whether the frequency response was below the templates when throwing the dice and generating random uncertain plants to confirm those worst case gain results. The blue thing, H infinity, does not meet the required specification. That's why worst case gain was above one, but new synthesis red thing keeps under the templates. The H2 minimum variance of server, common filter, let's say, plays in another league because we did not put output weights. It charts as a reference minimum variance design whose output we'll see in time domain next. Of course, even if we are showing here the both magnitude to an individual input, what the optimizer is optimizing is the singular value, sort of square root of the sum of the squares of these both magnitudes, with worst case of all three inputs simultaneously and combined. So let's go with a performance analysis in time domain. First, we'll see, let's say, the step response. We computed this VCI is infinity, mu is mu synthesis, 2 is 2, and double VI indicates that inputs are scaled, so they have size 1, and then the input weight transforms to the peak amplitude in physical units. But we did not put output weights to see also output in physical units. So this is the step response for a bunch of random plants, and we see that there are oscillations because you know the damping is unknown so even if for the nominal plant let's say the h2 and h infinity of servers with that step in known input they would render zero force estimate as the model is uncertain the force estimate is not zero and it has some kind of oscillations at middle frequency and also regarding estimation of the actual force step force, well, we see that the most accurate at zero frequency is indeed the H infinity, followed by mu synthesis close to it, and then H2 has a large error. So these observations fit what we expected when looking at the frequency domain. We have here a low frequency behavior in which the observation error is smaller for H infinity, small enough but a bit larger for mu synthesis and very large for H2 because we did not provide the green template frequency weight to the H2 design. Of course, you can download the code and play with it at will. And the thing is that, well, we saw these peaks at around 2 radians per second arising from this oscillatory response. So good, this is the step response. Now we'll carry out 
a time simulation with an arbitrary input. Again, you can put whatever input you wish, but we will simulate some sinusoidal stuff in process noise and random thing in measurement noise. First, we need to connect things. So we, we will pursue building these block diagrams in which we will have a physical plant in Cyan and then I will have sort of three outputs, the true force band limited, the known input and the sensor measurements and I will feed the last two here to the observer and get the estimated force to compare with the actual one. So how do we do it? We will do it by name, connecting the sensor noise summation block, this one, the constant input weights, and this GTST, which was the uncertain plan with this low pass stuff. These three elements were built in previous videos. And the thing is that when connecting those two things, we went to MATLAB to extract a dynamical system with these three scaled inputs, whose worst case amplitude will be one, and we want as outputs, as we saw in the block diagram, the force, the known input U, and the measurement. Then this plant experiment object is sort of the scion lines in this block diagram. And then if we connect that plant experiment stuff, second and third outputs with the observers OOI H infinity, OO2 H2, and OO mu red, the new synthesis observer after order reduction to order six. Well, the thing is that we have thing I, thing two, and thing mu, whose inputs will be, of course, the same three inputs, and the output will be the estimated force. So we need to compare, let's say, the first output of plant experiment with the only output of, of thing whatever. As I said, the important is not the details on MATLAB connect stuff and names of signals. Conceptually, you just need to understand that we are simulating this block diagram and comparing the dark green with the light green stuff. So once we have these things, we need to be aware that in order to apply LSIM, the linear simulation command for MATLAB, we don't need uncertainty. So this GTST the actual transfer function, let's say the actual physical system we are going to test, will need to have some uncertainty replaced. You can simulate whatever uncertainty you wish, random choice, or for instance, in here, we this line would simulate the nominal plant. This would simulate the maximum damping extreme. And in here, we are going to simulate the worst case plant in the H infinity design, which was obtained by the worst case gain command when closing the loop with the weighted generalized plant with the H infinity design. And in fact, it was delta equal one, which corresponds to the lowest damping extreme in my physical model. So if you don't know the code, you can simulate whatever GTST you wish. In here for brevity, we will just simulate the less damped extreme plant. So we will set some simulation inputs and time range. We will simulate 20 seconds. Our inputs will have a sample time of 0.01 seconds. So our simulation will be faithful up to sort of 300 gradients per second. And the inputs to simulate will be, well, first the known input, we will just set it to zero because, okay, we cannot be three hours making a lot of simulation. So change it if you wish. So we will just simulate a sinusoidal process noise, cosine of some 
frequency, we will test some input frequencies of the unknown force, and we will simulate VTST, a measurement noise. And, well, the issue with this measurement noise needs some clarification. Basically, we are carrying out the design in continuous time, so the unit noise in continuous time generalized plants should mean, at least for H2 stuff, a white noise with infinite bandwidth, power spectral density 1, at all frequencies. But that thing cannot be simulated. It's an idealistic stuff that has infinite variance and changes infinitely fast. However, real signals are bad limited. So, simulation theory tells me that power spectral density 1 up to this Nyquist frequency should be simulated with a random noise with standard deviation 1 over the square root of sampling time. And of course, that simulation will not be faithful from that frequency onwards. But here we have two things. One, okay, we will assume that actual signals will be somehow band limited in my experimental stuff, and I will have negligible frequency content from 300 radians onwards. So I don't believe that I will face a true white noise in my experiments. This is why I chose the sampling rate 0.01. And then also, edge infinity designs do not consider process noise to be a white noise. They are not minimizing variance. They are minimizing sort of worst case amplitude. So I will divide by 4. And why did I divide by 4? Some statistical stuff? Well, I just divided by 4 because I found the plots below to be beautiful and somehow sensible. But this division by 4, if you are an expert in stochastic processes or whatever, then you will feel pain seeing it because, ah, oh, come on, he broke everything. So, well, play with this number at will because Edge Infinity does not consider white noise stuff. And I hope that actual inputs to my observer will be somehow band limited because of my sensor bandwidth, because, you know, white noise doesn't exist. So with all these caveats, we will go on with the simulation, even if this line might frighten a statistician. So, okay, we simulate this low frequency cosine, and let's see what happens. Well, this LSIM carries out so the experimental data, and the real force will be the first output, and the actual measurement will be the third output. So this will be the 20 seconds of sensor output I am measuring, and you think the signal is too noisy, then divide by a larger number than 4, the measurement noise, and if you think the signal is not noisy enough, then put a bigger measurement noise. I leave it to you. I just think that the noise in this signal is sensible for later use, so I'll keep it. Well, with this sensor output, if I L-SIM the H-infinity, the mu synthesis, and the H2 observer, and I plot the estimations and the real force, then I get this behavior. I see that the H2 yellow thing somehow has a significant bias in the tracking of this force. Mu synthesis and H infinity have a better tracking at this low frequency signal, as expected from this central ball diagram. But however, the variance due to the measurement noise, it's kind of the integral of the rightmost diagram. Well, the best one will be the H2 minimum variance stuff, and the others will have larger variance. And indeed, we see that, yeah, the variance around the time varying mean, of course, the yellow signal, H2, is kind of smoother, has lower high frequency content than the blue H infinity and mu synthesis, red, which is the one with highest measurement noise amplification, as the boat diagrams said. So this is it, a trade-off between variance and low frequency accuracy. 
this is the estimation error, the difference between the actual force and the estimated one. And we see that the low frequency components of the yellow H2 thing are larger than the others, but we see also that the others have a lot of high frequency components. Well, this is it. If you don't like it, you should play with the frequency templates of several of the designs to reach a compromise you think is better. If I multiply frequency by 10, this 225 was the worst case frequency in the H infinity design. This is the sensor input to my estimator. And these are the outputs. The real one is in violet. And well, we can see that none of the three observers is actually too good. But we see that the H infinity seems to be the worst one. And well, we are, you know, exciting and uncertain resonance peak and performance is not too good in any of the three cases. But okay, that's what it is. If we plot the errors, we see that in this worst case stuff that Musin tries to minimize under modeling errors, then the amplitude of the observation error of the H infinity is sort of double that of the Musin in exchange. Musin is the one that filters less the high frequency noise, of course. And last, if I multiply by 10, again, the frequency, then my signal to noise radio is very bad. So the observers have a quite bad estimation in relative terms, in the sense that all three of them have an error amplitude or confidence interval or something like that, around 0 0.3, 0 0.4, which is even larger than the actual value of the force. This is this region of the bow diagrams in which indeed the estimation error is above the cyan line, which is the actual force frequency content. This is sort of a waterbed effect. In order to be so good at low frequencies, it seems that we need to be quite bad at these intermediate frequencies. So error is more than 100% in relative terms. And also, Musin needs to be the worst at high frequencies, because taking into account modeling error needs a higher gain observer. So, if we conclude, in this video, we compared in time domain linear simulations in both a step response and some arbitrary input. We chose it a sign, but it could have been anything. So we realized that the frequency domain conclusions we reached in the previous video correspond to the results of time simulations. And what we can see in time simulations is the effect of the measurement noise in the high frequency components of the signal when that measurement noise is random and not a worst case sinusoidal amplitude as H infinity templates assume. Of course, the actual signal to noise ratio and the amplification of measurement noise that can be tolerated will depend on a given application and the actual bandwidth of the input signals, which will for sure not be infinite. But well, those details and noises, sometimes you just need to check whether your experiment is good enough, or if it's not acceptable in terms of variance or whatever, then you need to go back to the design room and change the frequency templates. Okay, we finish here. Thanks for watching.